you see warming in the free atmosphere above the surface. Mountain glaciers are melting all over the world. You see warming of the body of the ocean. But the evidence of warming is unequivocal. You can imagine that uh, the forests would be drier, that they're warmer, uh, that, that evaporation rates are enhanced in, in summertime. So temperature really is, is one of the major driving factors that we should all think about. But there's other aspects to this. There's uh, precipitation. In Ontario, total precipitation has increased, although that's always tempered by increased rates of evaporation. Projections for northern Ontario, even relatively wet areas in northern Ontario, uh, are going to experience severe droughts in the future. Which then uh, results in, in forests that are more susceptible to fire. And fire, of course, has major impact on ungulates, particularly moose and caribou. Moose, on the one hand, respond fairly positively to fire. They like early successional forests that comes along after forest fires. Whereas caribou, on the other hand, the opposite effect. Caribou prefer older growth forests of 40, 60 years and older. So increasing uh, forest fire means uh, more habitat for moose and less habitat for caribou. I believe I'm seeing things in the forest, in the forest ecology, the way trees are growing, the way uh, wildlife populations are behaving that don't seem to match our past experience. And what we have seen in particular uh, in this part of the country is a pretty rapid increase in white-tailed deer range in northwestern Ontario. Basically what was happening is that uh, they're able to survive the winter better because of you know the uh, milder temperatures little perhaps a little less snow but uh, certainly the temperature you know component and allowing them to survive and and uh, to expand their distribution more towards the north. Increasing deer numbers means uh, increased transmission of brain worm. They release the brain worm into wetlands. The larval forms of the brain worm are actually picked up and carried by slugs and snails, which are picked up by moose by accidentally ingesting the snails and slugs along with the other vegetation that they're feeding on. And once the slugs or snails find their way into the moose system, then uh, the larvae are released and then can infect the, uh, the moose with brain worm. The winter temperatures and the winter snow conditions are allowing deer to survive better during the, the winter time. With higher deer survival, we also see an increase in, in some of the predators surviving as well. And higher predator survival, of course, means that uh, there's greater predation on moose and caribou, not just on, on the deer. Well, two of the principal predators of moose are wolves and bears. These are also predators on caribou. And so what happens then, as the moose population increases, so too does the wolf population. The wolves then take caribou as they encounter them, but as the number of wolves increase, their number of encounters of caribou will also increase. And because woodland caribou is really just, just able to survive in these areas of northwestern Ontario, any kind of change like that, like increase in, in uh, wolf density, may have a significant impact on this population. The other more specific effect of warmer and drier winters has to do with winter ticks and moose. An adult moose can easily carry uh, 30,000 winter ticks in a, in a winter. And the main effect of the winter ticks is to cause skin irritation to the moose. And the moose respond by grooming themselves and rubbing against trees and essentially taking their hair off. They may have lost 70 to 80% of their hair covering. Clearly, if they've lost a lot of their hair, they can be affected by cold temperatures. In particular, if we've seen an increase, as we have in the number of freezing rain events in January, you take a moose that has lost, let's say, only 30 or 40 percent of its hair at that time, uh, expose it to freezing rain, and then the temperatures drop back down to minus 20 or minus 25, the moose are clearly subject to uh, a risk of hypothermia, and uh, a lot of those moose will not survive. Prior to uh, leaving the moose, every adult uh, female will take a large uh, blood meal. 
If you have uh, 30,000 adult uh, female ticks taking a blood meal all at about the same time, there's a huge amount of blood loss. We're now at about uh, 0.75 degrees C above pre-industrial levels. Okay, it's projected that the climate will be warming about 0.2 degrees C per decade additionally for the next 20, 30, 40 years. The mitigation decisions that we take affect climate that our grandkids and great-grandkids will be living in. We have to take kind of far-sighted action in order to slow this down in effect.